Reporting from Arkham Asylum, this is Gotham Rogues. In this video we take a look at forgotten Batman villain, the Savage Skull. Throughout his near 80 year old existence, Batman has faced countless enemies. Some of these have gone out to stand among the most infamous fictional villains in pop culture history, while others have completely vanished into obscurity. In this segment of Forgotten Bat Rogues, we spotlight the Savage Skull. The Savage Skull was introduced in Batman 360, released in 1983. The story was titled When Slays the Savage Skull, and it was written by Doug Monk and penciled by Don Newton. In it, a new mysterious serial killer stalks the dark streets of Gotham, a killer who targets cops with a large knife as his weapon of choice. Naturally, Batman is on the case, and after doing some investigating, the Dark Knight deduces the Skull's identity as Jack Crane, a former cop himself. No relation to Jonathan Crane, by the way. Turns out that a year and a half ago, Crane was severely burned while being trapped inside a burning building, presumably set on fire by a teenager. Before the kid could flee, Crane fatally shot him. However, during this subsequent investigation, no evidence of the teen actually being the arsonist was discovered, and with a record of being overzealous, Jack was expelled from the force. Now, with a burning hatred of the police who betrayed and disowned him, Crane has become the savage skull, and his next target is the police commissioner himself, Jim Gordon. At the end of his first story, Savage Skull seemingly died from a fall. Yet just one month later, in Detective Comics 528, the villain returned. Titled Requiem for Skulls, this one was also written by Doug Monk, but penciled by Gene Colan. In it, we get no explanation as to how Crane survived the fall, and now he's at it again, murdering members of Gotham's finest. It's also revealed that Detective Harvey Bullock used to be friends with Jack, and after doing some deducing, Bullock manages to track down the Savage Skull's lair. With the aid of Batman and Commissioner Gordon, Crane was finally captured. Despite only being locked up and not dead, the character never returned ever again, and he still hasn't. Not even one single cameo. Of course, he certainly hasn't made a jump into any other form of media either. This makes the Savage Skull the most forgotten and obscure rogue I've covered in this series so far. I personally have known of him for many years though, as I read his first story when I was a teenager in an old Swedish reprint. I honestly think it's a bit odd that Savage Skull never became a recurring rogue. He certainly has the chops. I mean, he's a disfigured, psychotic freak. He'd fit in perfectly with guys like Joker and Two-Face. He's also kind of unique, as there aren't any other Batman villains with a grudge specifically against cops. If you had stuck around, you could also have retold his origin story and made the character a bit more sympathetic and compelling. Not that he was completely unsympathetic. In his eyes, he never did anything wrong, and after being hideously burned, not only did his friends not support him, but actually fire him. So if you try and see it from his perspective, it's not strange that he feels betrayed. Now that I think about it, you wouldn't even need to change his origin, just flesh it out more. I do really like this villain, he had potential, and feels a lot like the killer from an 80s slasher movie. Like the guy from The Burning, which also featured a burnt, disfigured serial killer after revenge. He is of course also very reminiscent of the killer from Maniac Cop, another disfigured policeman stalking the streets. I guess the Savage Skull was Batman's answer to the slasher movie craze going on in the 80s, making his two comics a pretty neat reflection of the times, in terms of pop culture. So there you have it, that's the story of forgotten Batman villain, the Savage Skull. Remember, Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video.